Hallo und willkommen. Ich bin Meister Lenz and you're watching Get Germanized A, well, Germany and Get Germanized Q&A. Oh, Lambo, what should I do? Ah, ich weiß. Get Today I'm going to answer questions that you have asked me specifically on Instagram with the Q&A feature. Um, I've answered these in some detail more or less before. You can find my shorter answers in the Q&A section, but today I'm going to pick some of them and answer them in more detail if I can. So let's get started right away. Are you left or right-handed? I am right-handed. Recommend German songs or German bands that will help me learn German. And I have listed here Die Ärzte, a very cool punk rock band that I enjoy personally as well. It actually was my first concert when, when I was 16 in Minden. I saw Die Ärzte live and it was amazing. I'm going to see them again this year actually at Rock am Ring. But definitely recommend Die Ärzte. Also Bela B Official, um, or Bela B, Bela B Official is just his Instagram name, sorry. Uh, Bela B is a part of Die Ärzte usually, but he also has a very cool solo project and uh, that you can check out as well. It might seem like I'm a fanboy, but <laughs> uh, Farin Urlaub Racing Team is the solo project of the main lead singer from the Ärzte, Farin Urlaub. And Farin, Farin Urlaub Racing Team is just amazing. Make uh, just as good songs, I would say, as the Ärzte. Even better sometimes, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, definitely check him out as well. Then there is, of course, Schandmaul, a very folk, metal, folk rock, um, storyteller kind of vibe band. Uh, I enjoy them a great deal. They're very fantasy and um, just fairy tale influenced texts or lyrics. And so, yeah, that's really nice um, if you like that kind of stuff. A friend of mine doesn't really like them at all, even though he likes the next band, which I'm a fan of myself and which I have seen recently live. Uh, in Bremen. And the next band is of course Subway to Sally, a very cool uh, folk rock and metal band as well. I greatly enjoy them, have listened to them since I was what 15, 16, they've been around forever. Um, so for two years, that's when I was 16. <laughs> no, but uh, in all seriousness, they are great. Another band, a solo project of Eric Fish, which, which is the lead singer of Subway to Sally, is Bankrei. So it's not really a solo project, I shouldn't say, because he's with an amazing um, singer, a female singer, and of course other band members, but it is like a, a spin-off kind of project. I'm not 100% sure what you call that but it's really good. Check them out too. Bandkreis. Then we of course have Eisbrecher, which, well, um, is part of the Neue Deutsche Härte. I'm pretty sure some of you know Neue Deutsche Welle, which includes a certain, well, array of bands, and Neue Deutsche Härte is just kind of the metal version of that, uh, which I really enjoy. All of the bands in Neue Deutsche Härte, or many of them at least, and Eisbrecher is part of them, a metal band with German texts, German lyrics. Saw them live at the Mera Luna festival last year and uh, they are pretty amazing live as well. And last but not least, you will have guessed it, Rammstein, one of my favorite bands. I don't listen to them all the time because you have to be in a very specific Rammstein mood to listen to Rammstein. But it gets you powered up, fired up, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a good band. Uh, very polarizing at times, very uh, polarizing lyrics too. Lately um, Lindemann, which is the solo project of Till Lindemann, uh, has collaborated with a German rapper <laughs> and they have made a song about maths. That's all I'm gonna say. It's very interesting. I don't think it's necessarily that great. Eh, it's more about getting people to talk about it. I think that was the idea behind it. I'm pretty sure but yeah, not, not too shabby. And then there's of course other German artists that I enjoy but don't listen to regularly. Casper is one of them, very good German rapper. And uh, he's half American, I believe, actually, um, from the US. Then there is Peter Fox. He makes very cool pop songs as well, but I think he's, it's been quiet around him for a while now. Um, not sure, actually, I don't follow the new trends in that uh, music genre. So I wouldn't know really. And other than that, hmm, I can't think of any right now, but I made videos about German bands, German music before. So I thought probably about other bands in those videos. Maybe we'll see. I, it's been a while since I made that video or those videos, 
Uh, if I think about it, I'll link them in the video description. If I don't, just type in get Germanized German music or music, get Germanized in music, and then you should find it. Them, I mean. Next up, is it true that most Germans are into engineering? And I wouldn't say most Germans um, are into it necessarily. Some, even if they don't think it's like their perfect job that they would be perfectly passionate about, they might still do it because engineering or being an engineer, ingenieur in German, is very respected here. If you are an engineer, people are like, oh, oh you must earn a lot of money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah engineer. Mm, mm, yeah, mm, ah. So it's, it's definitely one of the jobs that will get you respect if you work in that kind of field. It's always been like that. Um, you know, Germans, for some reason, do really respect uh, that kind of work, which is fine. Um, we respect other fields uh, of work as well, but definitely engineering for sure as well. And so many of my friends are engineers. I mean, they probably have a knack for it as well. Otherwise, I don't see someone going through all of that training and that stress that you would put yourself into if you don't really understand or like what you do. So maybe, maybe most people that do it are into it. I'm not sure, but it's definitely something people choose as well because it brings you money and not fame, but respect. Next question, how friendly is Germany with tourists that don't speak German? Uh, that is an interesting question because I know um, that it can be scary coming to a country where you don't speak the language and you have to, you know, make yourself understood somehow. And um, there is an anxiety inside of you when you're in that situation. I know it. For example, when I went to Japan, um, it's difficult. But in Germany, I mean, as long as they notice that you're friendly and, oh, hey, can you help me? Kind of like that. If they notice that you are in need of help, I don't think many people would look or think twice about speaking English to you. If they don't speak English, they would probably still try to help you. Mit Händen und Füßen, as we would say in German. So pantomime language, basically, we would still try to help you out. I mean, you can be unlucky and meet someone that has a bad day or that just doesn't like people that don't speak German, but that's pretty rare, I would say, especially in the bigger cities. People don't necessarily everywhere ex expect you to speak perfect German. Um, and if you just have a few sentences in German that you can speak, try those on, on people and uh, they will be happy that you attempted it at least. And then they are more than happy to converse with you in English. That's actually a problem for some uh, people that come here to Germany that we Germans like to practice our English and uh, sometimes even don't care <laughs> that you want to practice your German because we want to practice our English. No, well, I mean, it happens. It's not always like that, but it happens. What did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, at first, definitely some kind of voice actor or entertainer. Well, I mean, uh, entertainer part, I guess, uh, has kind of become true uh, educator. I've never thought about that, to be honest. A voice actor, I would still like to do that at some point. I've even gotten an offer from one of you, from the Germ fam, to help me out with that because um, he and his wife work for a talent agency in New York, I think that's what it was, and uh, he wanted me to send in some demo tracks of me just voice acting some commercials or something like that. But due to like personal reasons, I haven't gotten back to him yet. I definitely still want to do that. It's just been a very stressful last year because I have to admit it's been a long time since he offered this, like a year almost. And I feel very bad about it because that is definitely something I really want to do. I guess I'm holding myself back somehow as well because if I try and fail, then I know that I can't do it because that is kind of a dream of mine. But I need to get over that and just get out there and try it and do it. Um, and if you out there have any trips, trips, yeah, tricks and tips for me, let me know in the comments as well. But yeah, when I grew up, definitely something like that. I mean, I recorded uh, a radio show with my friends on a tape recorder. I uh, filmed videos on my dad's camcorder, like silly skits and uh, jackass kind of uh, videos as well that I'm not proud of uh, or videos on our motorbikes and stuff like that uh, stunt videos at some point as well with like little cross motorbikes it was just uh, a fun time fun time to be alive it was and it still is and I made uh, my hobby my job I didn't think like I said that I would become kind of an educator 
um, edutainer, as I like to call myself sometimes. But it's definitely something I enjoy because it's more than just passing people's time or helping them pass their time. It feels good to provide that as well. To know that my videos do more than just make you laugh. Even though that's fine as well. I like to do videos that just make you laugh and that don't really have any additional value. So yeah, I think definitely entertainer is what I wanted to become. At some point I thought about becoming a journalist. I mean, I do research for my videos and stuff like that and do research on the internet and all of that. It's kind of a mix out of many different jobs, I feel like, what I've become in the end. And like I said, there's still room to expand on it, there's still room to transform myself into more than I am right now. And that's what my goal is uh, long term. Next up, do you know any Spanish? Solo un poco. Donde estas la biblioteca? That's the extent of what I can do, sadly. Uh, it's been a while since I learned Spanish in school. I had it for like four years and all I can say is like uh, Yo soy Dominique, que tal? Ani fu ni fa? And so I always say the same stuff when people ask me because I haven't kept learning Spanish. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't even know how to say I'm sorry anymore. What is this? <laughs> what is life? Uh, not por favor, not gracias. <laughs> De nada, no, not de nada. Oh, I, I forgot. I f mind fart. No, yo soy loco, un poco loco. Hmm. Yeah. Next up, is it common to take off your shoes when entering someone's house? I would say yes. I enjoy. I want to say I enjoy that. <laughs> I prefer that because especially when you come from outside, it's been or it is a rainy, muddy day, whatever or your shoes are just dirty in general, you've walked through a train station or any area of a big city or anything like that, and then, then you enter my house. I mean, I appreciate it if you don't carry around the whole dirt, uh, all the dirt in the whole apartment. But then again, sometimes I walk around in my own apartment with shoes on, but that's, I think, a different kind of story. Um, that's why Germans have house shoes often, like slippers, house shoe. Uh, I have them, I have them on right now, actually. These old man house shoes. <laughs> It's old man slippers uh, because my feet get cold and I think that problem is common uh, all around the world I would say not only in Germany and uh, yeah I think it's just polite to take off your shoes or to ask at least if you're supposed to take off your shoes some might say yes some might say oh, I haven't vacuumed in weeks so don't, don't worry about it but uh, really you should ask first. Next up, are you open-minded uh, when it comes to same-sex relationships? Are you in one or have you been in one? Uh, no, I am a hetero male, so I'm only into girls. I know that I have a lot of LGBTQ viewers, but I have family members that are not hetero. I'm not gonna say anymore. I don't wanna out them on the internet here. Uh, and so I'm pretty open to the, all of that. Like I don't care really at all. I have many friends that are not hetero, also not going to name any names or say anything more because I don't know if they're okay with that or not uh, to, to like me saying this on the internet, probably not. Who would be really unless they openly uh, have come out already? Anyway, yeah, I don't care. Like you can do whatever you want. Anyone should be able to do whatever they want to do unless it harms other people and I don't think that harms anyone really. Next up, where else would you like to go in the USA? Because as many of you know, I have been to Georgia namely uh, Marietta and Atlanta and, and that kind of region there. I uh, made videos there too, so if you want to check them out, type in Get Germanized in USA, you should be able to find them quite easily. But I would like to go back and visit my friend Crystal and her boyfriend, just some of the people that I want to see there. And I would like to go back to Atlanta and visit my friends there, of course, as well. But definitely also, like I said, San Diego to visit Crystal. Um, and I guess Las Vegas or San Francisco would be cool, I guess. New York, LA, like anywhere really, to be honest. I would also like to see all the national parks. That would be great. Not sure when that will happen at all because it is expensive to travel all over the place. My next destination will actually be Tokyo in Japan. Me and my friends are gonna go there um, on May 12th, 2019. So if you're watching this video next year or whatever, then I've already been there. I have already been to Tokyo anyway in 2016 for Halloween. That was fantastic. Uh, so I wanna go back with my friends Kevin and Sergio this time around. Kevin has joined us last time and now it's Kevin and Sergio. And yeah, we're gonna explore Tokyo in May during summertime kind of. 
not not really maybe spring i guess or the beginning of summer not sure how it works there uh pretty similar to germany i would say when it comes to seasons they got fall and stuff like that as well um but yeah hope to see more of tokyo stuff that we've missed last time around that we weren't able to do for example we want to do the, the super mario kart tour through tokyo a three hour tour where you can rent a go-kart and then drive through tokyo in costumes that's crazy and that that's what i want to do <laughs> for example or the kabuki theater i want to see uh, so much stuff that you can do there there's even a vr world where they have entire rooms for just vr experiences and stuff like that i want to do that i want to see more temples more nature more of everything it's going to be fantastic next up how did the concept of showing people the german culture come uh, about well i said here it developed over years i started making videos in english around 2006 talked about random things first and then answering people's questions and that is true and often these questions were about the german language or the german culture just like oh where do you live in germany what do you do there what is it like to live in germany what are the people like there in comparison to well my country whatever and there's been just so many of these questions that i started making videos about these topics and more and more videos and then in 2013 this channel was named Get Germanized, had different names before. It exists since, since 2009, uh, quite old. That's why there are many dead subscribers probably as well. Not dead, not dead in the literal sense, but dead accounts. <laughs> I hope they're not dead. Uh, but yeah, it's been a long time, a good ride. I've been on YouTube in general, in general, since 2006 or five even. When was it when YouTube came around actually? Because I made videos before that, like I said before, and then just shifted over to youtube and last but not least what do you like to eat apart from german food uh apart from german food apart from that uh well italian food chinese food japanese food uh thai food did i say thai food american food like anything really indian curry for example italian italian lasagna is one of my favorite italian dishes or pizza of course um or uh, Vietnamese pho or pho, pho I think, pho. Um, Japanese ramen or sushi. Oh, that's so, I'm so hungry right now as well, it's not fair. Um, I have some chili actually, chili con carne uh, that I have made a couple of days ago. Not too long ago, don't trust me, it's still good to eat. I'm gonna eat the rest of that right now after this video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a big foodie. I like all different kinds of food. The only food that I really don't like is long green beans. For some reason, the, the taste is just too intense. Like it covers or dominates a dish, I would say, like with its taste. Um, and I don't like that. For example, even if I wrap bacon around it, it still comes through the bacon taste. How is that even possible? <laughs> it's just, yeah, no, I don't, I don't like them too much, to be honest. And that's about it with today's Q&A. If you enjoyed this, let me know. And of course, leave a like, subscribe. Um, thanks to all my Patreon supporters and to the channel members here on YouTube. If you have clicked on uh, the join button next to the subscription button, then thank you very much. You help to keep this channel alive. Because of you, these videos exist and keep existing. So thank you, seriously. Vielen Dank. I am super thankful to all of you who decide to support me that way on Patreon, via PayPal donations or here on YouTube via yeah, the channel membership or just liking the videos and watching them regularly and commenting and sharing them, all of that kind of stuff. Thank you. You really are the germ fam, the Get Germanized community, and I love you for that. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get Germanized. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>